I love boot knives. I started my knife career carrying a Lloyd Pendleton double-edged boot knife that was a copy of a Bob Loveless boot knife. Had a brown micarta handle, about a four and a half inch double-edged blade, clip point blade, and it was razor sharp. And I carried it in my waistband for years and years and years. All through um, working at the Teamsters Union at United Grocers, and I wore it all through college and after college. So I wore it a long time, and I still quite often wear a boot knife. Now, as fond as I am, as this five and a half inch Vaquero, which is an enormously strong tactical folder, holds over well over 400 pounds on the lock and pass all of our most horrendous impact tests. A boot knife like this, like this counterattack one that I have here that I want to talk about today, this thing is far stronger. It's made out of 8A steel, it's five millimeters thick, and it's Japanese 8A steel. It's not some Chinese steel that someone's pasted the name 8A on. We actually buy the steel from Japan because they make awesome stainless steel there. So it's genuine 8A steel. It's a Rockwell hardness of about 5758. And it's five inches long. So the blade from here to here is five inches long. It's about an inch wide. It's concave ground here and flat ground here. So it makes for a very, very stiff blade between the way I grind it and the thickness makes for a very stiff blade. And the fact that the blade is fairly short at five inches. And the other thing I want to point out is how sturdy the point is. For a double-edged knife, because I use this grinding method, I get a sturdier point than normal. That's one of the biggest uh, drawbacks to a double-edged knife is sometimes the point can be more fragile. And to overcome that, I use this grinding method. So while the point isn't as strong as a tanto point, it's still very, very sturdy for a double-edged knife and unlikely to snap off. So that's a big advantage of this counterattack one. That sturdy but yet acute point. I mean, slight pressure and you can feel that and your hand wants to jump away from that point. The knife is sharp, but probably not as razor sharp as some of our other knives because of this grinding method and because of the short bevels. One of the problems always in a brute knife is because the blade is short and the bevels are fairly short, how do you get it razor sharp and stained too? So there's some compromises. So well, you could slash a cut. It's probably not going to cut it as well as this five and a half inch Vaquero that's flat ground and just frighteningly sharp. It's got that huge bevel. You can see the difference in the bevel. I mean, this bevel here is, I dare say, three, three times wider than the bevel from here to here. So it's going to cut well, but it's not going to be a lightsaber. What it is going to do, though, it's going to pierce like everything you touch was made of butter. Tremendous piercing ability. And part of that piercing ability is aided by this handle. The handle is four and a half inches long, a little bit longer than some other boot knives because Americans are bigger every year. And so I try to size the handle so that almost every hand can get a decent grip on it. This knife is long enough for me that I can get a full saber grip and have my thumbnail go into this top quillion, which is rubber, but not, so, not as hard as steel. It's pretty stiff, but not near as unforgiving as if it had a steel guard. The other thing I want to point out is the way I designed this is this entire guard can't forward towards the tip. This is pushed forward, the quillians round forward. Everything kind of goes forward and rounds over. That's to make it really comfortable when you choke up on it. And in reverse grip, your hand's just going to love this. This part of your hand right here is going to go right in there, and it feels awesome. And your little finger is going to come around on this side, and if you hold it in a reverse grip like this, this knife is just admirably suited for that. Or you can put your thumb here on the pommel if you want. I usually hold it like this. And as most of you know, I'm not a huge reverse grip advocate, except for certain portions of the fight that might be more applicable. But 
this knife really lends itself, I think, to the reverse grip. But either grip you use, you're going to have lightning-like speed and tremendous penetration. The grip is all textured, so no matter what, your fingers are going to get an awesome bite on that handle. I don't care if your hand is wet or sweaty or bloody or your grip surface is any way compromised, it's going to be enhanced by this. The tang goes all the way through to the end of the handle and you can see the tang right there and then you have your lanyard hole, lanyard hole going through. And this knife only weighs four and a half ounces. It's very lightweight. It's lighter than this one. This one weighs just over seven ounces and this one weighs four and a half ounces. So it's actually lighter than my favorite folder. And with the sheath, the whole thing only weighs six ounces. So you can carry a counter tag for less weight than a five and a half inch Voyager. That's pretty awesome. And the other thing is, you can draw it faster than anything. This is the fastest draw that you can get to. It's this boot knife. I usually wear it in the front of my waistband. Sometimes I'll wear it in a pocket. Sometimes I'll wear it in the, in the small of my back. Sometimes I'll wear it horizontal on my belt. It just depends on what I'm doing and where I'm going. But this is faster to draw than a switchblade. It's faster than assisted opener. It's faster than a balance on. This is the fastest thing there is to draw. It's to draw straight from the sheath, right out. Now, lots of places it's politically incorrect to, to carry a sheath knife, but this knife is pretty inconspicuous. When you wear it on your belt, which you have to do in California to be legal, it doesn't it doesn't make such a huge statement of like danger or whatever that people look at you aghast. It's, I get a lot more stares from carrying a Bowie knife than I ever do carrying a boot knife. So I would encourage you to carry a boot knife. It's far stronger and arguably more effective than a tactical folder. You know, the tactical folder can match the size of the blade and the width of the blade and maybe even the cutting power of the blade, but it'll never match the strength I don't care what it is, it'll never match the strength of a fixed blade. And this is the ideal small knife to carry. Now, a lot of people don't carry it today because it's politically incorrect. But in lots of states now, you can carry this. You can carry this concealed in Texas. You can carry it concealed in Arizona. You can carry it concealed in Florida. There's lots of states that you can carry this knife. Everybody in Texas, I encourage all my Texas customers to get a counter-tack or a counter-tack too and stick it in your boot. You won't regret it. Carry one of these things. They're enormously useful. If your life's on the line, and you know, you, you never know when you're going to need it. You might carry it your whole life and not need it. But when you need it, like that gun, you're going to need it very badly. And for four and a half ounces, this is awfully good protection for a very low weight. There isn't any gun that will match this weight and performance. The closest I can think to of it is a kel 32 at 6 ounces. And I'm a big fan of those guns because they weigh 6 ounces. So look into the counter tack one. Very effective, reasonably priced boot knife. This thing only has a suggested retail $75. A tremendous buy. You get this very well made and sturdy secure edge sheath and it's got a, a boot clip here that you can take on and out on and off you you know we have c clips that you if you want to attach this to your belt you can attach it to your belt with with the c clip that will add like belt loops to it so it's very very versatile lightweight effective and inexpensive the counter tack one from cold steel